Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 43 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show, we will be talking about Microsoft has hosted the Missouri Office of Administration, hacked, hacked and hacked, two day training seminar again to train in employees on its cloud computing platform Azure. During a competition, 56 OA developers split into teams to find solutions for problems using Azure. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three training tips. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on another training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here and the audience should know you got that right the first time. I never thought you would have done it, but you did it. Congratulations. That was that mouthful. It really was. And thanks for just ruining the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's one of those things. There's many, many an edit that goes on in these shows that people may or may not see. But that's that's the fun of uh, recording shows on a weekly basis. We just hope that the uh, you know people see the sense of humour and uh, and get some great content from it. So uh, always appreciative of you being around, Dave. Thank you. It's a pleasure. <laughs> okay, so look, we've got a great opening question. Uh, in your experience, are these type of hack seminars useful, or is it just an excuse to drink and and do some code at the same time? I think it's kind of both. These things are great fun. I, I've judged a number of them uh, throughout the United States, and they uh, basically are focused on people being creative and innovative and doing so kind of in a time box. And so what Microsoft is doing is like, here's Azure and here's our tools, and you know, go ahead and use this to build an inventory control system, whatever kind of problem they're looking to give them. And then guys like me show up and judge them one to another, and then the folks who win are, are given lots of money and and I, I and, and perhaps jobs and I think it's it's kind of a, a good reflection of life. I mean, you think about it, the teams, our companies, and the companies have to build stuff and get them into the market and do it right and impress lots of other people. So it gives them kind of a good jumping on point for leveraging the technology. Um, <clears throat> many of them, I'm not sure this one is. They stay up for 48 hours. Uh, I went to a conference one time where they're in behind glass, and so people looked at them like monkeys in a cage for two days, and they're running around, you know, sweating and you know just got you know guzzling, uh, you know, Red Bull, trying to stay awake. It was kind of you know tough to watch, but um, you know this kind of spawns creativity and kind of innovation and people thinking competitively and how they're doing it. And uh, I think it's a you know step in the right direction in training. I think it's the way in which they can get. The exposure into the platforms, and they're not necessarily in this case not necessarily as their gurus. They're, you know, as their novice novices, and they're looking to, in essence, leverage their new skills to build stuff. And I think Microsoft is, you know, it's great PR. You know, it's great building brand recognition. It's great building more users in the system for, you know, sponsoring these guys to kind of uh, build things and deploy them in, in you know, on their systems and. So it's a you know step in the right direction. I think it's going to be a big part of training going forward. Uh, hackathons are going to be kind of the new Olympics, <laughs> so to speak, in terms of geekdom. And we're going to see a lot more of these things going forward. And by the way, this if you've looked at uh, the um, social network, which is the movie, they actually have a scene where they kind of show a hackathon. It was uh, you know kind of a um, all night you know programming thing where they were uh, uh, coding and drinking at the same time and which is fine um, if you can stay awake doing that. But uh, I thought it was uh, you know, kind of endearing and I think this is endearing as well. Yeah, it truly is, truly is. I, I've got, had a couple of visions there. I've just got visions of you being uh, the Simon Cowell of the hackathon, you know, um, sort of, uh, you know, psychologically abusing some 15 year old uh, teenager and telling him to go back to his bedroom uh, and not to uh, come back to the hackathon until next year. <laughs> You must have been there. It's exactly what I did. I, I'm not happy until they cry. Yeah, no, I, I imagine you'll have many, many a boy in tears. But look, I'm sure it will make the man of them. I'm sure it will make the man of them. And yeah, I mean, there's been um, there's been a number of things now. I think Australia have just recently done something where um, they've introduced a big business into protecting a Lego city. 
So there's developers from large organizations that are defend, defending the utilities of Lego City, a real working Lego City from hackers. So they're given sort of a, a disaster recovery program, as it were, of a real life potential threats to a, to a Lego City, uh, which I found quite amusing and thought that is just, it's cool, but it's geeky, but it's cool. But I can see how that works. And, uh, you know, I think it's great as well from a training point of view because it does give uh, people that wouldn't necessarily have had that um, opportunity to elevate into a, a real wor world business objective scenario, which can switch the brain into a different mindset from a training point of view. So I think that's a really, really cool thing, don't you? Yeah, I do. And I think someone who's just volunteering to participate in something like this would, you know, have a uh, more credibility. And, you know, in my view, I, I think that they're that you know, these are great learning experiences, and the thing is, if you're learning proactively and you're willing to put yourself under a bit of stress, which these do, uh, and uh, really kind of risk failure, which these you know these do, those are kind of the components of people you want in your organization. So, it's it's kind of the autodidact way of building, you know, um, you know, programming skills and training, you know, and and leveraging training for what it is to simulate you know real world pressures and things you're looking to do. Some of the things I uh, you know, if I'm looking at Things that would improve in, you know, kind of the cloud computing training is they don't really teach you to move to deadlines. They don't really teach you to, uh, you know, understand user requirements. They don't really teach you how to deal with difficult people. And I think you're going to get all of that experience when you do some of this stuff. And I, I think it's a step in the right direction. And so people who, like I said, bring this upon themselves, um, then they're automatically, you know, 20 steps higher in the star rating in my book just because it's you know someone who i can trust to go off and take on new challenges yeah it truly is it's a catalyst isn't it i think if someone gets to a certain point in their you know professional life or their, their career direction is taking a change and they're looking into development software coding that sort of thing you know doing immersing themselves in this uh you know level of um uh, discipline uh, and, and having to work to, uh, you know, albeit uh, it's not a business critical timeline, but it's a timeline that would be alien to them in their process of learning. I think that could be a really good switch in them, their, their shift of mindset, don't you think? Yeah, I do. I, I think the ability to kind of, you know, live up to deadlines to get things done is, uh, is a skill that's kind of fallen by the wayside. Um, you know, I run into this all the time because I, you know, work with all kinds of generations of people. And the reality is that clients need things done, businesses need things done on time, you have to be able to time box this and do a reasonable job uh, to get to a solution in the time that's allocated. And by the way, that, that may not mean you get to an optimal solution because you don't have two years to do it, you have two months. And by the way, that may mean that you have to work some extra time, extra effort uh, to make this thing happen. But the reality is I think once you do it, you kind of feel a sense of um, you know, accomplishment uh, that you don't get if you kind of work, you know, a regular unstressed job. And, and I think those are, um, you know, going to be the more desirable people going forward. And, and I'm more saying, not saying burn people out, but I'm saying that people who like challenges and want to basically build a career upon challenges after challenges, you know, this is a way to do it. This is a way to train yourself and, you know, basically work Train yourself the way you, sh you should be working uh, in very uh, short, consistent sprints that have very uh, defined objectives, and you can measure yourself against moving to those objectives. Very good. Very good. Dave, thanks for that. And I'd love to hear your top three tips around this topic. Yeah, make sure that you make learning fun. I, I mean, um, one of the things that uh, you know I like to do is be creative on learning events, and so you know, if they're going to go out and basically spend time and learning a particular technology, you know, it should be some fun interaction around that technology. For example, if you're going to learn a programming language, perhaps leveraging that programming language to create, you know, virtual reality, um, you know, kinds of uh, projects where they can, you know, walk through a virtual room that they create with the technology that they use. That's one thing I did. But the ability to, in essence, um, you know, program in, in a fun places like the middle of Disney World. And, you know, those are things that I've seen happen in the past. And I think they're really kind of good, innovative, creative ways to get people motivated to be better at what they do. And then make sure you focus on the tech that's relevant. And one of the things that drives me nuts about hackathons is they go, okay, we want you to build everything in C++. Well, you know, that's, it's, you know, it's Node.js and Python and, you know, that kind of stuff. So, 
make sure you're leveraging the relevant technology. Typically, cloud computing is the best way to go because it's so cheap and people are able to give you free accounts. You're able to leverage whatever uh, languages you're able to use and databases you're able to use. Um, don't look at the old stuff. Even if you have applications that are written using this stuff and you're trying to sponsor people to write, uh, um, compete in a, a code contest to deal with your legacy code, uh, it's no good. And then leverage your reward system. Um, these things always give money, and, and I think that's fine. Um, but I've seen jobs go to winners, which is kind of a weird way to hire somebody. You won the contest, and so we're now we're going to give you a job. And you know who knows where they came from? They could have you know walked out of prison last week or something like that. But I guess they're taking a bit of a risk. But at least monetary rewards and something that's instantaneous in terms of people understanding that they're being recognized. And I think the motivation of people is they're not necessarily looking to make money, even though that's a good thing to do. They're just looking for the recognition that they realize that their efforts are being uh, looked at and, and, and uh, uh, evaluated and approved you know, by people, their peers, and as well as their leadership. And I think that's far more important than the monetary awards, but the monetary awards should be there as well. You know, give them a, you know, give them a trip to Hawaii, or give them, you know, you know, a couple thousand bucks, or uh, AWS gift card if you're cheap, or a Starbucks uh, gift card if you're even cheaper. I mean, there's lots of things you can do to basically make sure that there's a aha moment that we're giving you something for the efforts that you put in. Yeah, truly. And thanks, Dave. Top three tips there. I love them. You got it, man. I think I think you're right. The incentive side of things, when it comes to, to training, even when they're or you know in the, in what we're talking about now, the context of hackathons and things like that, the incentives have really you know they don't necessarily drive them, but it is that thank you at the end of you know participation or you know the the winning uh, the winning of that particular thing. I think it's key. And, uh, and but I always find as well that people that are you know measuring success themselves and making sure they've got the right incentives. That they give themselves in the world of, of without being in the the, con, the constraints of a hackathon or something like that so people that are on that journey of training some people are just too hard on themselves uh, in in general and, and i think you know people can be you know the the negative self-talk can be very detrimental to the progression within a training environment whether it be in cloud or, or whatever you know people are looking to to train or retrain train in so it's always it's always um, an idea you know for listeners out there or people that are watching um, is to look at how you're measuring your, your success, measuring your training, and making sure that you've got the right incentive in place to thank yourself. <laughs> I, don't think, I, don't think, I don't think people thank themselves enough. Is that right, Dave? No, I don't think they uh, thank themselves enough nor give themselves enough recognition. And, of course, there's another dimension of people who thank themselves too much. Um, you know, a great, great, great uh, massive of narcissists that I run, run on a daily basis. And the reality is you have to you know, kind of find a happy medium. You have to give yourself an opportunity to reward yourself and kind of, you know, pay attention to the accomplishments that you made, but, you know, you have to be humble about it. I guess that's the best way to put it. Yes, absolutely. That's, um, I mean, having gratitude is one thing, but having that, that on the wrong side of the tracks is, yeah, it's not, it's not a nice personality trait. I'll, I'll agree with that one. Dave, thanks very much for being part of the training show this week. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you. Happy to do it. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you found it uh, insightful. There was lots we covered, and there's lots more training shows as well, uh, which I haven't mentioned before, I don't think. Uh, you can check those out on the channel and on the social media. Dave and I do lots of tweets about the shows as well, so you can find us pretty much everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. We're everywhere, so come and check out and subscribe and become uh, part of our, our tribe, our cloud computing tribe. You can get David on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard. And remember to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the future shows you can catch us on itunes and stitcher and all the other um, podcast platforms it gets sort of sent out all over the place so uh, yeah you can check us out there if you are if you don't want to watch us but thanks for watching and look forward to next week <laughs>